Hey guys, welcome to another video. What we're going to be doing today is we are going to be breaking down our week two predictions for the college football season. The 2024 week one is in the books. We're now moving on to week two. There's not a new AP poll out as of yet because of the Labor Day game. Florida State versus Boston College. They pushed out the AP poll till Tuesday. So we'll have to wait to get an updated rankings, but we're going to go ahead and go through the ranked teams as of right now, look at every single game, the matchup, and try to predict the final outcome, the spreads, money lines, and the over-unders. Go ahead, hit that like button, and subscribe. If you have any comments, drop them below, and I will make sure to respond. Let's go ahead and get things started. We have one of the biggest matchups of the year kicking off September 7th. At 12 p.m., we have number four, Texas, versus number nine, Michigan. Texas coming off their 52 to nothing win versus Colorado State. Michigan coming off of their 30 to 10 win versus Fresno State. Texas looked good. Quinn Ewers did have a pick, but they were able to throw the ball. Manning came in. He threw the ball well. Uh, Gibson had a great game running. Looks like their wide receiver core picked up right where they left off last year. They lost Mitchell. They lost Worthy, but they were able to replace those guys through the portal. Wingo had some massive catches, and that defense looks like they did not lose a step at all, even though they lost a lot of players to the NFL draft. Michigan. Michigan left a lot to be desired. Obviously, Harbaugh's gone. Sharon Moore's now the head coach. They replace all of their starters on offense except for one starter. That's the tight end. We know they're going to have a top 10, top 15 defense. That's what they do. They're going to run downhill. But they did not look good, especially at the quarterback position. Their, their offense left a lot to be desired. They got a win. That's all that matters. This game is in the big house. Michigan is the underdog here. Texas on the road, seven-point favorites over under 44.5. I'm going to go with Texas winning this one based off of what we saw last week. Michigan is what I thought that they would be this season. They lost a lot of their production from their national championship team. They lost 66% of their overall production as a roster. I have Texas winning this one 27 to 17. I have them covering the spread, but I'm going with the under. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if that comes down by the time that we get to game day. Next matchup we're going to look at at 12 p.m. on the Big Ten Network. We have Bowling Green versus Penn State, who is number eight. Penn State, 34 and a half point favorites here. The over-under is 48 and a half. We know what Penn State is. Penn State... Honestly, they look like the best team in the Big Ten as of week one. It's just week one. You don't want to look too much into it. They made changes as the offensive coordinator, and you could see the fruits of that this weekend. Drew Aller was slinging the ball all over the field. Last year, they had eight plays of over 20 yards the whole season. This past Saturday, they had four plays of over 20 yards just in the first game, just in week one. They were slinging the ball. They have one of the deepest running back rooms in the country. They have James Franklin. They're going to have a top 10 defense led by Allen. This team is loaded. They're going to shut this down. Bowling Green might get a garbage time fourth quarter touchdown. I have Penn State winning this one 44 to 10, and I have them covering that spread. The next matchup we're going to look at on ABC, we have Arkansas versus number 17, Oklahoma State. This game is at 12 p.m. Oklahoma State, a 55.9% chance to win this game. Arkansas State fans, some of them are pretty pumped up because they had a 70 to nothing win this past Saturday. Great. You can't take that away from them, but this team has been a revolving door at quarterback. KJ Jefferson's gone, and they've been revolving through offensive coordinators, seems like. Every half a season, there's a new coordinator in there. Sam Pittman's feeling a lot of pressure. Oklahoma State had a decent win this past weekend. The big thing for them is they are able to run the ball downhill. They have Doak Award winner Ollie Gordon. He had a great game this past weekend. He's going to have a great game this Saturday. If this game gets close, look for the Cowboys to rely on him, lean on him. I have Oklahoma State winning this one 34-27, and that would be a push but they would be going over. 
The next matchup we're going to look at at 12 p.m. on ESPN. We have number 18, Kansas State versus Tulane. Kansas State, a 55.1% chance to win this game. Kansas State, they're 10-point favorites here. The over-under, 51.5. Kansas State, solid win this past weekend. They have the highest recruited quarterback ever, Avery, taking over for Will Howard, who transferred off to Ohio State. They can run the ball downhill. They have a very physical defense last year. They only gave up 20 per game. That's a top 25 defense. They're physical. They're well coached. They have players at the skilled positions. Tulane, they lost their entire team, including head coach Willie Fritz, who went off to Houston. But they actually played pretty well last weekend. In week one, they won 52 to nothing. Props to them. But there should be a massive talent gap here. I have Kansas State winning this one. 35 to 20 covering that spread and I'm just barely going with the over the next matchup at 12 45 p.m. on the SEC network we have McNeese versus Texas A&M Aggies or number 20 when the new poll comes out you know they might be 24 25 they might just barely be unranked but they did lose a very close matchup to Notre Dame there's no shame in that yes Connor Wegman, he's banged up. He he played like crap this past weekend. There's no way to spin that. I did pick the Aggies to lose it, so I wasn't surprised the way that things turned out. But one thing you know is the Aggies are still built in the trenches on both sides. They can run the ball downhill. Even if Wegman can't play this Saturday, they're just going to run the ball downhill. They're going to run all over McNeese. So no matter what, they're going to win this game. There's not a spread yet. But I'll just go with them winning 42-6. to six. The only reason I don't have them scoring more is, one, there's not a spread. Two, we don't know if Connor Wegman's playing. Next matchup we're going to look at on the SEC Network at 2 p.m. We have number one, Georgia versus Tennessee Tech. Obviously, this game is going to be a blowout. There's not a spread yet, but I have Georgia winning this one 52 to nothing. I just had them putting the backups in basically after the first half. The... Uh, Backups will still be able to score on Tennessee Tech. So this could easily turn into a 60 or 70 to nothing. But I don't have them getting any points. Next matchup we're going to look at on NBC at 330. We have Northern Illinois versus number 7 Notre Dame. Fresh off their win at Texas A&M in College Station. They have a 96.1% chance to win this game for Northern Illinois. This is a team that can score some points. But again, there's a massive talent disparity here. The main thing that Notre Dame needs to count on here, they had a couple players that got banged up this past Saturday. Rest them. Keep the O-line healthy. Once you get a lead first half, pull the starters. There's no need to play them in this game second half if the game is in hand, which it should be. You're going to have a top 10 defense. Defense always shows up to play. This is a very physical team. Al Golden coached a great game. Ken Denbrock there coaching the offense. Riley Leonard, he needs to get his passing percentage above 50%. That's fine that they won this past Saturday. I picked him to win, but he's not going to be able to compete down the stretch, especially in the playoffs, if he's only throwing for 50%. That's his career completion percentage. You got to work on that. That's not good enough, but still, this is a very good team, and they can run with anyone in the country. I have them winning this one 35 to 13 the spread is 28 and a half i don't have them covering that as of right now but i'll just have to wait to see how healthy they are come this saturday the next matchup we're gonna look at at 3 30 p.m on saturday baylor versus number 12 utah who's 1-0 utah has a 77.8 percent chance to win this game they are 14 point favorites here the over under is 53 and a half. Utah won this past weekend 49 to nothing. Baylor also won, but Dave Miranda, he's really feeling the heat. If he does not get a bowl game, if he doesn't win seven or eight games this season, he's getting fired. So more than likely, he's getting canned. You should be able to be better at Baylor. You're right in Texas. You have uh, really good utilities there. Everything's built up for the football team to succeed. He hasn't been able to maximize that potential that's there. Utah. Coming into the Big 12, one of the best teams in the nation. A top 20 defense. Cam Rising's back at quarterback. He showed you this past Saturday why they missed him last year when he missed the whole season. Kyle Winningham, one of the best, most underappreciated coaches in the country. The third longest tenured coach in the country. I have Utah winning this one 37-17, to covering and going with the over. The next matchup on CBS on Saturday, 3 30. 
we have Iowa State versus number 25, Iowa. The battle for the state of Iowa. This game could get really boring, really sloppy. Iowa State, physical team. They run downhill. Well-coached team under Campbell. Uh, they're not, they're not going to light it up on offense, but really no one does versus Iowa. Iowa's always going to have a top 10 defense, but they're always going to have a bottom 10 offense. Even though they fired the offense coordinator, they did not look any difference this past weekend. Yes, they scored 40 points. A lot of that was special teams and defense, not the offense. But nonetheless, this team's going to win this, and they always seem to go with the under no matter what. That's just Kirk Ferentz's way. I have Iowa winning this one in a boring game. If anything else is on TV, watch that. But Iowa's going to win it 20-9. to So I'm covering the spread, but I'm going with the under. The next matchup at 4.15 p.m., we have Middle Tennessee versus number 6 Old Miss. Coming off of a 76 to nothing win, a massive beatdown. Props to Lane Kiffin. This is a well-coached team. This is a very deep team. You have Jackson Dart. They're loaded at running back, loaded at wide receiver. They worked the portal hard on the defensive side of the ball. They basically pushed all their chips in for this season. They went all in, playoffs or bust. This is a team that can definitely compete in the playoffs. They're 42-point favorites here, over under 62 and a half. I have them winning this one 55 to 13, so that would technically be a push, but I'm sure that spread will come down to 40 or 41. But 55 to 13, and I'm going with the over. The next matchup at 6 p.m. on Saturday, number 19 Miami hosting Fam U. Miami a 99% chance to win this game. There is no spread as of right now. Miami's coming off of that curb stomping of Florida in Gainesville. Cam Ward looked great. Damian Martinez. They have Restrepo, Brown, George. This is a loaded team on both sides of the ball. Even with Bain getting hurt on the defensive line, they were able to replace him with Barrett. This team is so deep all over the field. The two safeties, first-year starters here, they look great. This is a team that's probably going to win the ACC. I did pick them to win the ACC. I did pick them to whoop Florida last weekend, so I was not surprised. I have Miami winning this one easily. They're going to win it 44-17. to But like I said, there's no spread as of right now. But FAMU might get a fourth-quarter garbage touchdown. Next matchup we're going to look at also on Saturday at 7 p.m., Alabama versus USF. This was that horribly sloppy game last season. It's not going to be close as of right now, but Bama is a 31-point favorite. The over-under is 62.5. USF, though, is actually a pretty decent team. They can score some points. I think they finished last year with eight or nine wins with a really good offense. You don't want to sleep on them. They might get blown out that first half, but once Bama puts their second, third strings in, USF might be able to get some first downs, maybe score 10 points in the fourth quarter, which is just straight garbage points. But they might, you know, pad the stats a little bit there. Bama's a massive favorite here. Bama, Jalen Milrow, you have Kalen DeBoer. The team looked great this past Saturday. Defense played great. Obviously, we have some questions just because we haven't seen them versus a actual good FBS team yet but this is where USF might get the garbage points but no matter what this game is not going to be close at any point of the game I have Bama winning this one 48 to 20 like I said 10 of those points are garbage points I do not have them covering the spread I might change my mind once we get closer to game day but I have them winning 48 to 20 the next matchup also on Saturday at 7 p.m. We have Buffalo versus number 11, Missouri. Missouri, solid win this past weekend. This is a team that returned a lot of their starters back, especially with Cook. They had a top 30 offense last year, top 30 defense. They have the easiest schedule in the SEC. They can almost sleepwalk to a 10-2 record this season. This game is going to be a blowout. They're 34 and a half point favorites here, the over under 52 and a half. I have them winning this one 41 to 10, not covering the spread. The next matchup we're going to look at on uh, Fox Sports at 7 p.m., we have number 22 Kansas on the road versus the Illinois Fighting Illini. Kansas, a 66.8% chance to win this game. Five and a half point favorites here, the over under is 55 and a half. Kansas, might have the best offense in the Big 12. They're a sleeper pick to win the Big 12 
and to make the playoffs and get that bye week. Kansas, they can easily go 10-2 and this season. Very well-coached team, solid, above-average defense, a really good offense. A lot of that hinges on if Daniels can stay healthy at the quarterback position. He's never played a full season. When he does plays, he lights it up. He can run, he can sling it, and they also have Neal at the running back position, a top three running back in the entire nation. They're going to run downhill on anyone. It is what it is. I have them winning this one 35 to 24 on the road. I have them covering the spread and going with the over. The next matchup at uh, 7.30 on the Big Ten Network, we have Western Michigan visiting number two Ohio State Buckeyes. Ohio State, massive favorites here, 38.5 point favorites. The over-under, 52.5. Western Michigan, they're 0-1 right now. For the Buckeyes, yes, they won, what, the last game, 52-6. to They played well. Really sloppy first. I was not impressed with the Buckeyes' first half. Yes, they blew them out second half, but... Will Howard, yes, he's better than Kyle McCord, but I thought he left a lot to be desired. It was first game under Chip Kelly, under Ryan Day, new scheme. So I'm not going to look too much into week one. I think he's going to get better every single week as they go through the Big Ten schedule. By the time they get to the end of the season, he'll be a lot better than he is right now. But I thought their offense kind of looked a little slow. They had like two touchdowns. That came off of their defense. We know they have the best defense in the country. They're going to have a top 10 defense to end the season. They're going to rely on their defense. But this team is loaded. And Smith is legit at wide receiver. They have Egg Buka. They have Junkins, Henderson. The offensive line, though, they need to get a little better. But you have Chip Kelly calling plays. He's going to dial things up. It's trial and error. Sees what did not work week one. He's going to adapt his play calling to cover over the deficiencies of the offensive line. I have them winning this one 52 to 10, covering the spread, and I'm going with the over. Next matchup on the SEC network at 730. Nichols visiting number 13, LSU. We don't have a spread yet, but we know LSU. Brian Kelly, he made it known. He is angry after their close loss to USC. Nussmeyer played great. They have a run game. Their defense under Baker played much better than last season. Even though they lost, the season's not over. That was an out-of-conference game. Everything is still in front of them. They can still make the playoffs. They have the number, what, five overall talented roster. This team is loaded. They're going to blow out Nichols. They're going to be angry. They might even shut them out. But I have them winning this one 62-3. The next matchup we're looking at on ABC at 730. We have number 15, Tennessee, versus number 24, NC State. A ranked-on-ranked matchup. Tennessee on the road, an 87.9% chance to win this game. Tennessee played really well on Saturday. They won 69-3. to NC State, yes, they won their first game, but it was not good. They didn't actually take control of the game till the fourth quarter. They looked really, cla- uh, really crappy. McCall... Um, he needs to play a lot better. He had, yes, he had like 300 something yards passing, but it was pretty sloppy. He overthrew a lot of guys. Guys weren't getting open. The Rudd game did step up when they needed them to step up, and that's what got them the victory. But Tennessee's going to have a top 20 offense, top 20 defense this year. Five star Nico. They have uh, Squirrel White. They're loaded. They can run the ball downhill. Nico is going to light up NC State, but NC State always has a solid. Physical defense, but I have Tennessee winning this one 34 to 24, covering the spread, and I'm going with the over. The next matchup at 745 on the SEC network Houston under Willie Fritz versus number 16, Oklahoma. Houston, Willie Fritz is there now, but they lost almost this entire team through the portal. He's completely flipping this roster. This game should not be close, but Houston does have some playmakers. But obviously, Oklahoma has the number 11 roster. They can move the ball. Brent Venables has recruited this team really good. Top 10 recruiting, top 10 transfer portal. They have a five-star quarterback taken over. He looked really good in his first regular season start, starting out the season week one. They were throwing it. They were running it. I have them winning this one 48 to 14 covering the spread and going with the over next match about 8 p.m on saturday appalachian state versus number 14 clemson clemson 81.4 percent chance to win this game 
This game is kind of a sleeper potential upset game. I'm not saying Clemson's going to lose, but Appalachian State, well-coached team. They're always physical. They always play above their weight class, and they always have a really good quarterback, and they play well on the road. Clemson, that was a pathetic showing from Dabo and his team on Saturday. First half, they played great, but the defense got gassed. We know they have the number 11 roster in the country. They have a top 10 defense, but the offense was atrocious. So far, they're not better year two under Riley. Dabo refuses to adapt and use the portal. Cade Klubnik looked like complete trash this past weekend. Moffa didn't play well. Yes, they played Georgia, but they shouldn't get beat the crap by Georgia. They should be able to at least get a first down, get a touchdown. They didn't. I would say that they would get revenge this game. But when they started out last year really slow and crappy, they didn't get revenge versus no one. I have them getting better, but not beating the brakes off of Appalachian State. But I have them winning this one 30-17. So I do not have them covering the spread, and I'm going to go with the under here. Then at 10 p.m., a late one on Saturday, Boise State versus number 3, Oregon. Boise State was in a shootout in week one. They won the game. I think the running back ran for like five or six touchdowns. They ran for almost 400 yards. Props to Boise. Everyone loves the Smurf turf, Boise State. They're, they're, they're always a fun story. This is always a really tough out-of-conference matchup. Usually you're crazy for playing Boise State out-of-conference because sometimes they just surprise a team and beat another Power 4 team. So you always want to keep your eye on them. Take them serious. I think that's what Oregon did last week when they had a complete pathetic showing verse. Was it Idaho they were playing when they won like 24 to 14 or 24 to 17? That was pathetic. I'm not hitting the panic button on the Oregon Ducks. This is a top five roster, top five defense, top five offense. Yes, they were not able to punch it in Saturday, get touchdowns. They had too many three and outs. They had too many moving it in, in into the other team's territory, but not able to actually punch it through and get a touchdown. Dylan Gabriel looked great, but for some reason he wasn't pushing the ball vertically down the field. It was all dink and dunk. I think he went like 41 of 48 for almost 400 yards passing. That's all great stat-wise, but I don't know why they were so conservative, but maybe they don't want to show their playbook yet. I'm not panicking at all. This is a team that's going to make the playoffs. This is a great offense. Just sit back. They're going to score points. I have them winning this one, and they're 18 and a half point favorites here, over under 55 and a half. I have them winning this one 42 to 17. I do not have them covering the spread. I am going with the over. Boise State's going to get a touchdown that takes it out of the spread in the fourth quarter. The next matchup at 10 p.m. on Saturday on ESPN Plus Arizona versus Northern Arizona. They have a 97.2% chance to win. They were in a shootout this past weekend. They did win. I don't know where their top 30 defense went last season, but it was completely gone. But we know what they have on the offensive side. McMillan, Fafita, new coach, but they're going to be able to move the ball. They're going to be able to score. I have them winning this way. And there's no spread as of yet, but I have them win this one 54-18. The final game we're looking at, 11 p.m. on Saturday, the Big Ten Network. We have Utah State visiting number 23, USC, who's no doubt going to be moving up in the polls after they beat LSU. USC has a 94.9% chance to win this game over under 28 and a half. And sorry, the spread 28 and a half, the over under 61 and a half, a high scoring game. USC, their defense was much improved under Danton Lynn. Props to him. Props to Lincoln Riley for making the changes there. Miller Moss looks legit. He's deadly passing the ball. This wide receiver core was making crazy one-handed catches against a really good defensive team last season. New good defensive team as of this year. Very talented team. USC is going to be able to score on anyone no matter who they're playing on defense. But their defense should be able to keep this game completely out of reach of Utah State. But they'll probably get a fourth quarter touchdown. I have USC winning this one 54 to 20. I have them covering the spread. And I'm going with the over. So that's our breakdown of our week two college football predictions. Go ahead, hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any comments, drop them below and I'll respond. Thank you.